Do you okay, see it now? Well, now we see the first. Yes. Yes, okay. and uh, sure. yes, and uh, yeah, Yasser yes. told me th that he lost the connection. So yes. please, Carol, floor is yours. Okay. So do you see the first and the second, right? I can move it and you, you see it. It's okay now. Hello? Do you, do, do yes, you yes, yes, yes. Go ahead. Go, yes. ahead. go ahead. Go yes. ahead. Okay. So first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, uh, today I'm going to talk uh, about the monitoring of POPs in our samples that we have conducted on a regional, on a regional basis. And a study we carry out regarding uh, on dioxin and in, a, in an oil field. Uh, first of all, I don't want to extend uh, my comments in this uh, slide because um, we, we have talked enough about this. But I want to highlight that the, that the Stockholm Convention requires to evaluate regularly the, the effectiveness of, of measures adopted by the, by the Convention to eliminate or significant, significantly reduce pop releases into the environment. To, the, to this regard, uh, uh, global monitoring plans have been established with the aim of collecting comparable, harmonized, and reliable information on POPs levels in core environmental matrices. Uh, matrices were also in human tissues like breast, breast, milk, breast milk and blood and also water. Uh, parties of the convention are obliged to initiate monitoring efforts to provide data that meet the requirements of UNEP Global Monitoring uh, Program. So in this uh, we are we are, we are working with uh, with um, different projects that are related to those uh, core uh, matrices, such as the um, the regional project that we just finished, PM 066C, uh, on the uh, preliminary assessment of, of this sp uh, spatial variation in the atmospheric concentration of pops in West Asian subregion. There is another project that is an ongoing project led by Dr. Hassan, that is the assessment of, of pops in human breast milk, and we got uh, recently approved a new project on the uh, potential association of uh, between the prevalence of non-communicable diseases and serum concentration of, of halogenated pops in Kuwaiti population. Yeah. So uh, mainly in this presentation, we're going to talk about this regional project on POPs, the results that we have obtained. And uh, this project uh, was developed by Kisser and started in 2018. And the primary goal of this project was to establish the atmospheric concentration of POPs across the Middle East and to understand the environmental processes that affect the sources and fate of these compounds. But also to assess the spatial and temp temporal changes in the atmospheric concentration of POPs included in the Southern Convention, and to identify the potential sources and hotspots of these compounds in the Middle East. Uh, in this project, uh, uh, five countries participated, although we tried to involve more countries, uh, but unfortunately, unfortunately they, did, they did not reply to us, but at least we have uh, five countries and uh, 13 sample, sampling sites in Turkey, Lebanon, Saudi Arabia, Oman, and Kuwait. The samples uh, were collected between January 2018 and October 2018 with the view of, establish, of establishing baseline concentration in the subregion against against which the uh, effect, effectiveness of global control measures to reduce the level of this compounds can be assessed. This project we use uh, 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 to the
Dr. Carol, I think you have uh, you have bad connection because uh, the, your voice was listed, lost it. In the high volume uh, samples. Uh, Dr. Carol. Uh, uh, typical high volume sample. Dr. Carroll, do you hear me? Hello, hello, hello Dr. Carroll. Uh, okay. Uh, Carroll, at the moment, we do not hear you. And, 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 uh, last five um, components. And uh, where uh, we can't trap the the face gas in the in the um, in yes yes Carl uh, uh, it seems that, that at the moment sometimes your uh, connection is not working please check in the field approximately eight hundred. Uh, uh, this, um, set up and uh, uh, okay. okay to try particular matters and the vapor phase uh, compound it, 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 maybe one time on, try to continue to talk yeah uh, and then they act some yeah Uh, I, informed, I informed now, uh, Karel, that um, the, the, the contact the contact is not good, so he will try to directly talk. Karel, a twenty-four hour. Um, uh, Some time, uh, samplers. Mm. I sent him a message uh, regarding this issue, but I think I don't uh, think he received or uh, noticed. No, no, I talked with him on on WhatsApp. You know, the the presentation was recorded in, in this in this five countries. Although we also sent Karel this sample to to Qatar to to. <laughs> Tunisia, to all a few countries. Well, uh, uh, Bahrain also, but we couldn't uh, go back to, to to analyze this sample. So the samples are designed to sample uh, to sample to get uh, Asia. <laughs> yes, try to do that. Roland. Yeah. 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 So now Karel tries to, to enter again um, and uh, to reconnect. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Karel. Moment. Yeah. I mean, overall, the technology is great, but sometimes uh, it fails, and when it fails, then it does not work. But uh, okay. yes, so Carl will, will uh, re-establish uh, the connection, and then uh, he will continue at the point where we, where we lost him. Hello? Uh, yes, now we can hear you. So, uh, Montaso Tamimi, Tamimi uh, could you please mute your microphone? Montaso Tamimi. Thank you. Do you see my, do you see my presentation? Uh, no, now you need to share. Not yet.
Yes, now it it's coming. Yes, ambient air sampling. That was the position where we lost you. Okay. Okay. So I was saying, I was, I was saying that we used two different uh, samplers in this uh, in this study, uh, and uh, and I was giving a um, flavor of what what is the um, high volume air, air, air sample. A, a sample. So a typical high volume air, air sampling device consists of a high flow rate pump that is 30 to 500 liters per minute, uh, an upstream filter to trap particle bound components, follow, followed by an, an absorbent material to collect the gas phase. So basically, we have we have a, um, a pol um, polyurethane foam we call puff plugs that uh, is used to, to trap the organic components from the gas uh, phase, where, uh, whereas the, la the, the, the latter has been most com commonly used to trap pop. So this is what we, uh, we are, it's being used in the, in the, in the this, this kind of, of absorbent is, is the one that have been used in every, everywhere to collect these this air samples, even in, in, the, in the GAP project, in GRULAC project, in everywhere. So normally uh, 800, uh, uh, cubic meters of air is pumped through the gas, uh, gas gas filter to trap particular matters and the vapor phase compounds trap on two uh, puff uh, are located downstream of the uh, gas filter. The active sample provides a snapshot of pollutants over short uh, duration. This type of sampling provides information on short term changes like di diurnal fluctuation and in, in concentration. So uh, the 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 most, I think, the most extended sample used in this kind of studies, uh, in particular this study where we are covering different countries, are the passive samplers. These samplers are designed to uh, to, to, to to air sequester contaminants by uh, gaseous diffusion and absorption. Their main advantage lies in the simplicity and the low cost with, uh, relative to active sampling techniques. As they do not require electrical power. To operate. This is the, an example of the of the of the passive sampler. Also, one that deployed in the in the. The film. Um, Dr. Karel, I think you have a bad connection. We don't hear Pass you. Something. Well. On the other hand, provide time. Time integration. 
hated concentration of As level of folks in the air are jumps and at a time it's in high volume air of air needed to be collected to trap sufficient amount of these starting compounds to ensure accurate and reliable. Quantification. Dr. Carroll, Dr. Carroll, do you hear me? So we cannot hear you well. So, uh, this is the way that we... Dr. Carroll, Dr. Carroll. Uh, ...prepare our, our buff to... ...to, to be a sent to... to our Dr. Roland, Dr. Roland, do you hear me? Yes, Dr. Carroll, Dr. Carroll, do you hear me? I do hear me. Yes, uh, unfortunately, we cannot hear you uh, well. Uh, uh, you, I think you uh, have hello? a bad connection. Hello, hello. Now do you hear me? Yeah, I, I'm hello. Not, Unfortunately, we can, unfortunately, it was uh, like uh, a bad connection uh, from your side, so that we... Uh, I we hel hello, can yes, you hear me? Yes, 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 sir. Okay, so, so sorry, sorry, I, I had a bad uh, network issue, so that's why I have, means uh, my connection has lost, uh, so Alhamdulillah, I got back now. Uh, it's good news, but also, can we also have... I'm having the same problem. Okay, okay. So, uh, Karel, can you do one thing? You just uh, put off your uh, camera video, then you just uh, start with the just with the audio. Try with try in that mode. Just uh, uh, off your uh, video and just uh, on the uh, audio only. Okay, just uh, try okay. just uh, try to share your screen and start. You see it now? Yeah, perfect. Okay, let's see. <laughs> let's I, think see we, I think I think we uh, we should go back uh, at least uh, two or three slides. So can you go back okay. two or three slides? Yeah. I, okay. More, 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 more one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes, yes, from here. Okay. Okay. Go, okay, go ahead. I let's see if <laughs> we can finish it. So uh, I was saying that uh, the, the the samplers that we use in this study in this regional project uh, for, for obvious reason were, were these passive samplers because this they, 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 their main advantage is that they are very simple they are low cost and they don't need electrical power to operate so it's possible to deploy them in the uh, in remote location without any problem and also they they have less risk to be vandalized by by by, by uh people the, these passive samplers uh um consist of a, of a puff disc houses in a stainless steel that's that's what that's what you see over here and uh, uh the chamber the, and and uh, the chambers dampen wine speed effects protecting the sampling medium from coarse particle deposition when deploying the field this they are uh, one of the main advantage of this sampler is that they provide a time integrated concentration of pops as level of pop in the air are generally generally low passive sampler were deployed for a minimum of three months at a time since high volume of air, of air need to be collected to trap sufficient amount of this of the target uh, uh, chemicals to ensure 
accurate and reliable quantification. So uh, I, I I was saying that uh, this this is what the, was the the, the sampling uh, strategy that we that we uh, uh, carry out for this for this project. So uh, the puff blocks used to collect uh, uh, these chemicals were uh, clean for 48 hours with a different combination of of uh, of, of solvent, for instance, and they were also color coded to uh, uh, facilitate the, the, their identification. For instance, the blue uh, um, the blue um, plastic bag containing uh, 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 containing uh, um, a puff that was, was clean with hexane. Uh, the chloromethane, DCM, and, and, and methanol, and this was used for PFC analysis. The, the the red one was clean with hexane, DCM, and toluene, and this what this was used for uh, dioxins and the dioxin light PCBs. And the green one was uh, clean with hexane, DCM, two, two times, and this was used for uh, or, or, or organochlorine pesticides, PBDs, and, and PCBs. Then the 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 pre-clean puff were dry in a clean desiccator on the vacuum and stored in, in, sol in, uh, in a solvent gla uh, glass jars. So uh, I was saying that the, our um, that the, our the methodology that we use to analyze the samples are based on in international reference methodologies and our uh, validated in our labs, but also in the standard uh, operating uh, uh, procedures. For instance, in this case, the, the, in the slides I'm showing, that the analysis of dioxin-like chemicals were based on the standard and the European standard EN 1948 Part 3 and 4. Recently, in la, uh, back in May, our our, our lab uh, got uh, certified uh, by uh, the ISO 17025 standard for the analysis of uh, dioxin and dioxin-like PCBs in air air and emission samples. Um, uh, the, the general analytical methodology for this kind of analysis is the, the one I'm showing you here. So first of all, the sampling, the, 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 we collect the sample, the samples arrive to, to our lab. It can be a soil, a sediment, a slush, or a, or a puff in this, in this case. And it, uh, the target analyzed are extracted. It can be by, by um, uh, accelerated solvent extraction, like the one that's the instrument I'm showing here, but also chocolate or other conventional uh, extraction te uh, technique. So then there is a cleanup that can, it could be manual or, or, or automated. And finally, the final step is the instrumentation analysis, that it can be GCMA, GCMSMS, GC, HRMS, or even uh, uh, HPLC MSMS. So uh, the the analytical methodology that we uh, apply to these samples was a follow. So this, the, the puff were uh, introduced in a stainless, in a stainless steel cell and a spike with a with extraction standard. We are, in, for example, here, we are talking about the, uh, the dioxin standards for this, uh, in this slide. Then it was, they were extracted by accelerated solvent extraction with a Dionex 350 instrument. And following this uh, this 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 uh, extraction condition, so it just is this this condition yielded uh, um, a 30 to 40 ml um, extract that uh, were uh, concentrated and and uh, cleaned up uh, by the uh, this the our power prep system where. Um, uh, it, that it consists of uh, of a different columns. It's a, this is a, a alumina column and a silica column and a, and, and a carbon column. And then the extract was uh, 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 was fractionated when we, we collect the dioxin uh, uh, fraction separated from from the uh, dioxin light PCBs fraction. To that we added the the, the recovery standard. And then we do we did the analysis in the HRMS uh, system uh, with the DBS5 MS column, with 10,000 resolution with the normal condition that are uh, established in the, in the reference method for this kind of analysis. When I'm talking about dioxin. In the case of 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 of, of PCBs, we did the analysis uh, um, with a uh, with a single quad instrument, GCMS uh, instrument. Then in the, the, if we Regarding the 
organoglobulin pesticides and PBDs. We do we did this analysis in a in, in an agile and GCMS instrument. All, all all of them in the on 50 meter columns. PBDs also in the GCMS instrument on the on 50 meter columns, and and non the in light PCBs was uh, were analyzing a single quad instrument on a, on a 30 meter blue fms um, 30 meter column. This is uh, in generally all the the, um, the target analysis that we cover in this presentation. So let's talk about a little, a little bit about about uh, um, results. So uh, when we talk about organoglobulin pesticides, we we took these uh, samples from five uh, Middle East Middle, uh, Middle East uh, countries. Like I said, from January 2018 to October 2018, the mean range, the, the mean range and median of these of these chemicals are, are shown there. So we can see that uh, uh, that the, the highest concentration were detected uh, in, in Lebanon, followed uh, by Turkey, then Oman, Kuwait, and Jeddah in, 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 in Saudi Arabia. So when we talked with, with our colleague from Lebanon about this, they, they uh, were able to identify a hot, they had a, like a hot spot in, this, in, in the area where we collected this, this, this sample. So the, 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 our results are in harmony with what uh, uh, are, uh, are expected because they had some uh, hot spots uh, over there in this, in this, in this area. So uh, the concentration of, of, of the sum of, of uh, OCPs uh, are shown this, in, this, in this slide. So the most uh, frequent uh, detected compound was uh, Parapara DDE, with the, uh, that, was, that, well, that uh, was detected in 100% of the sample fo followed for, by pentachlorobenzene, hexachlorobenzene, uh, alpha, alpha lindane, then Parapara DDE, et cetera. So, um, oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, in the in case, uh, just let's let's highlight a bit of uh, of, of the, the most important result we, we 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 got in this in this study. So as you know the ratio between the, the two most abundant isomers alpha and gamma used to de determine the source of of, of lindane at the particular site. In the technical mixture, the alpha gamma ratio is reported to range between four and seven. In this project, uh, uh, country specific alpha gamma ratio value, uh, values were as follows Oman 140, 141, uh, to one, uh, Lebanon 0.2, Turkey 212, Kuwait 0 0.8, Saudi 0 0.82. While the ratio range from 0 0.1 to 3.6 for the whole data set indicated that the source of these lindanes across the Middle East may be from the historical use of lindane. The elevated concentration of alpha uh, lindane uh, and gamma lindane in the Kartava site in Lebanon are similar to those reported at agricultural sites in, in Delhi, uh, reported by, by uh, Dr. Carla Pozo in, back in, in in 2011, so this uh, this we have to uh, just include these pictures because still nowadays these lindane are used as to to in, on, in, in children to uh, com, com, combat lice lices etc. So then the other uh, the uh, the other. Uh, Chemical that was uh, really important because uh, the, the metabolites were detected in all samples. So we have to uh, uh, was DDTs. So the relative abundance abundance of parents and metabolite is used to distinguish HDDT when the ra this ratio is uh, greater than one from fresh one when this ratio para para DDT, para para DDT is, is lower than one. In this study, uh, uh, the, this ratio was written that than one most size, 72% of the analyzed samples, suggesting that most of the sites, that on most of sites, the sources of, of DDT in the ambient air is from past usage. For example, revolatilization of HDDT from contaminated area. However, the ratio para para DDT, para para DDT in al Brazil uh, uh, and at Laga in Oman, in the, in the American University of, of, of Beirut, and, and, and other sizes uh, were 0 0.67, 0 0.2 to 0 0.49. Also in Lebanon, also in, in Turkey, 
uh, were below one, suggesting that, that fresh DDT usage within the vicinity of the sample locations in uh, of, of the sample uh, locations. So when it comes to the to the to the PBDs, uh, we see a similar uh, uh, um, uh, graphic. So the, again, the we have some uh, the, the highest concentration were found in 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 uh, Kuwait. So the, the concentration in general were uniform across the Middle East countries with value ranging from four to from four to 12 uh, picogram per cubic meters uh, included in the, except for the relative elevated concentration in Kuwait where the mean uh, in annual ambient concentration across the country was 60 to 42 on the 30 pico, pico, picogram per in the case of, 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 of PCBs, we are talking about here of non diosinide PCBs. Um, the concentration were the highest in the samples collected for, for, from Kartava in, in, in Lebanon and the lowest in Abdel in, in Kuwait. So, um, uh, the concentration were as follows: so Lebanon 254, Turkey, then Oman, and then Kuwait, and the and the lowest concentration was found was, uh, was found in Saudi uh, Arabia. The concentration were uniform across the Middle East countries, including this today, except for the elevated concentration in uh, in uh, Lebanon. When we talk about the oxygen and furans, here we I think that the that the Roland explained uh, one. Uh, Yesterday, that we expressed uh, the results in, uh, uh, in TEQ. So we expressed only one result, although we are measuring here 17 continuous. So the values, uh, the TEQ values measured in this study range from 4 to 30 uh, fent femtograms. Here we, we went down uh, in this unit, femtogram per kilometer, except for Kuwait and Oman, where elevated concentration of Two uh, seventeen and three twenty femtograms per cubic meter were um, uh, measured. So typically, the concentrations, uh, uh, the the Elsin and Furan concentration de de depend on sampling location. Remote sites are normally below ten femtograms per uh, eight cubic meters, uh, while the um, rural areas twenty to fifty, and urban or industrial areas from hundred to uh, four hundred uh, femtograms per eight cubic meters. So I'm going to uh, go fast here because uh, I don't want to go into details here. We we are seeing uh, we are seeing here some uh, um, fingerprints of the of the um, dioxins in, in in different locations. They what they the, the message here is is that uh, they in, because of the fingerprints are different. It indicates that they are different sources on um, on uh, for this uh, for these chemicals. So finally, I want to talk about a study that we run on the oil field in Kuwait. In this study, we use a, a, um, a, an active sampler, 24-hour uh, samplers, and we found uh, a really um, high concentration. Remember that we 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 said that the that the preferred value for an industrial area was around 400. Uh, um, Fentogram high kilometer. Here we found 33.62 in uh, 587 uh, uh, fentogram kilometers. <clears throat> and uh, that indicates that activities related to the oil industry have an important impact on the level of this uh, compound in ambient air. On the contrary, very, uh, very low concentration of dioxin like PBDs, 3.9 to 37 hute kilometers. Suggested that there is no significant local source of, for this toxin. So it means that the the the, the oil field has an, an, a contribution to the concentration of dioxins in, in air, but not for no. It's not the case for dioxin like PCBs. So additionally, the concentration of dioxins and dioxin like PCB were not controlled by temperature vari variation, resulting in the absence of any observed seasonal pattern. A unique dioxin profile was found in ambient air collected in this oil field, 
and we don't know why, but we hypothesize that the, the desulfurization facility located all from flaring oil delayed sites are the, are the, the main sources of this uh, uh, unique profile. So I want to acknowledge the, the, our foundation for, uh, for advanced and science for funding our, this, this, this project, the Visional Organization for, for the uh, Foundation of Marine Environment, for its contribution to also to the, our regional project, the Kuwait Company for funding the project uh, EC086C, uh, and the government of, uh, of Kuwait that uh, funded uh, the, uh, our lab through a government um, initiative, initiative called Establishment of West Asia Regional Center for, for Pops in Kuwait. Thank you for your, for your attention. Sorry for all these in, in, uh, interruptions. Okay, thank you, Dr. Carroll, uh, for the presentation. Uh, now I invite the participants. Uh, if you have any intervention, please raise your hand. Um, I think, uh, yeah, Roland, please. Yeah, uh, uh, Karl, uh, from the from the region, um, Palestine, Israel, this area. Do you have any any data? There is no data at all. Uh, there is no data, and it was difficult to send them this this um, to send them the samplers. the samplers. So we have plenty of samples, new new uh, uh, samples in the lab. We are willing to send them. Uh, to them if they can uh, deploy them but uh, at, at that time we, we couldn't uh, only a few some only a few countries uh, reply so we have no data and we and we can help okay but you would be open to to try to send uh, some samples if uh, let's say yeah, the ministry sure. or if uh, somebody from university uh, would be interested uh, to let's say uh, take care of the sampler, put it to the right uh, locations, like this open burning site or a background site, and so on. Right? Uh, yes. Um, yeah. We are, well, we are open here. I, I spoke to this with Dr. Hassan. It's the same thing. So if we can send them. We will send them. And we will do the. We will do the analysis of the samples. Yeah, exactly, Roland. I think uh, maybe Carol or someone from our lab, maybe they can show like some demo how to collect this sample using this uh, passive sampler. And uh, maybe like if they can handle it in a proper way uh, without any harmfulness. So then uh, it is a good step. Like, uh, we can it's we quite easy. Sorry, sorry, sorry to interrupt. When we when we ship the the the, the box with the, with the with the sample, there are also instructions and everything they need to, to, to deploy. Even there is a, a link with a video uh, of how, how to deploy them. So it's quite easy, it's very simple, and I think that uh, there will be no problem if, if they can uh, uh, receive this, this, this sample. Okay, great. So I think uh, Arnold, Atif Jabir, he raised his hand. Uh, Atif, please go ahead. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Dr. Carroll, for your presentation. Actually, I have yeah. small questions here. Uh, since uh, I am in, living in Gaza Strip, and we are actually passing uh, you know, a very difficult situation since 10 to 15 years, uh, and we uh, actually has been exposed to different, uh, maybe three to four uh, uh, wars in the, in the last periods, uh, heavy mass destruction weapons, attacks by airplanes from the Israeli side, to many buildings, many factories, uh, everywhere here in Gaza. So actually my question that, and we don't know actually what, uh, and uh, we feel that the number of the, 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 the cancers here uh, in Gaza, according to the, to the Ministry of Health are rising. So my question uh, that, uh, whether you have any information about these weapons or these, uh, uh, mass destruction, uh, different kinds of attacks to Gaza, on the Gaza Strip have, you, know, you think, that, do they have any kind of uh, maybe pops uh, in, uh, affected the air here, polluted uh, the air pollution here in Gaza? 
Uh, this is quite an interesting question, but unfortunately, I don't have any information. Why, uh, uh, and I don't think that there is there are pops there. Uh, we the the first thing that came to my mind was the the, the war in, in 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 Vietnam, where this uh, orange agent was deployed and the, the the soil was really contaminated with with dioxin, like because they they, they, they were an, uh, um, a contaminant in this uh, uh, pesticide formulation. But regarding to what you are saying, I have no no information. But what we can do is, if or together with the air samples, is also collect some soil samples to see if there is some uh, mm, uh, uh, anomalous concentration in this in this area. But I don't think really that uh, that uh, there are specifically pops. In this yeah. in these weapons, uh, they can have some other chlorinated chemicals, or some other halogenated chemicals that can cause this problem. But I have no, no I have no information about that. I don't know if mm -hmm. Roland, if you have. I mean, only in 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 the history, uh, military equipment often had uh, PCBs. So many of our sites uh, here uh, had a, a PCB impact. Uh, we had one time an uh, airplane uh, crashing in a city. Uh, in Germany, but that was decades ago, uh, and also um, there were there were contamination uh, from from that one. Yeah, so there are uh, some reports on different military sites uh, on PCB contamination uh, and on this uh, uh, PFOS uh, contamination, but that rather comes from from the firefighting foam, so not uh, from from weapons. From weapons. Because Dr. Keller, as uh, Carol, as you know, that uh, sampling and taking the samples and, uh, you know, for Bob's, it's not any easy issue. You know, it's not easy to, to sample or to take the sample or to cover the cost. So, you know, it's very, you know, closed area. So uh, that, uh, uh, but I remember a case that in the last war here uh, uh, that they actually uh, destroyed a big uh, storage area for uh, different kind of pesticides. For one of the, uh, for one of the, you know, uh, the for one of the, you know, uh, uh, three, uh, you know, one one of the one of the owners of the the, the, the pesticide and pesticide and uh, some of the university actually they took some samples from the surrounded area uh, from the ground and they discovered that you know it it uh, it, it has been affected the soil maybe in the future to the groundwater but it's you know it's a pesticide usually a, a usual pesticide which is used for agriculture but regarding yeah. bobs uh, either from the affected the air the uh, the the sand it's difficult you know for for uh, we people here to to take it or to sample it thank you okay thank you uh, i think uh, roland I think uh, there are uh, some uh, few studies like uh, regarding the cancer uh, cancer risk assessment uh, from the soil samples of the pops. Like uh, I have noticed, like in the recent uh, Dr. Hassan's paper, and there was one paper from Iran as well. So if we have the data, uh, we can do the cancer risk assessment, uh, right? Yeah, if you follow the different compounds. Yeah. Uh, then you have uh, transfer factors uh, from soil and so on, and you can make uh, uh, at least for for this pathway uh, uh, a risk assessment. Yeah, exactly. I think uh, I can see like more hands over here. Uh, uh, Gasan, uh, please go ahead. Then afterwards, I will give the floor to uh, Bilal. Uh, then size standard. Then uh, Shadin also raised her hand. Then I think afterwards uh, we will put the further discussion in the chat box. Okay, Gusan, please go ahead. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Keller, for the presentation. Uh, uh, what I want really to ask about the point raised by uh, Ronald, uh, if we are going to, to install one of these sample, uh, samplers or a couple of samplers, I mean, in, in Palestine here, what, what about the selectivity of the site? This is one point. I mean, how to select the site, the proper site for installing this um, uh, sampler. And uh, the other points related after installing these samplers uh, about the extraction procedure, uh, I mean, uh, in, in, uh, in terms of time, how, how long will install these samplers then um, after extracting the 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 adsorbed uh, bulbs, 
um, um, are these extracts uh, uh, um, being evaporated, then kept in a fridge, then analyzed immediately, or uh, is it okay to, to save them for a couple of days before analysis or uh, submitting for analysis somewhere? I mean, yeah. Uh, normally, uh, uh, the passive the passive samplers are deployed for three months. Mm -hmm. So you install it and deploy it for for three months, and after that, uh, you will um, uh, uh, go there, replace uh, the the passive sample for a, for a new puff that we will send you, and then you will send the samples to us. You remember that this this uh, the the chemicals that we are talking here uh, talking about here they are persistent. So they, it's always good to keep them on the, on the in, inside a, a refrigerator, but they will not uh, leave. They will not go any, anywhere. They, they will be there for, for, uh, for, for years. So it's, it's, it's quite easy to, to put it in, the, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a glass jar and, and ship it back to, to, our, to, our, to our lab. And then we will uh, perform an analysis here. So this is what, what I can, what, and uh, of, of course, I have to, I, um, to discuss this with Dr. Hassan, but if you, if you guys want to come over for training, we can also uh, uh, do this kind of training for, so you can maybe not do all the analysis, but uh, well, I don't know which kind of instrument you have in, 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 your, in your country, but at least maybe you have a, a single quad uh, GCMS system if not, you can come here and you can you can work with us and do the analysis. Uh, we can work together. We and we can train you. So there is no problem for that. Yeah, th thank you. This is the, the point. I mean, uh, what I was. I think uh, also our colleague Bilal Amos. He is going to uh, ask. He raised already his hand. Uh, at Birzeit University, here we have a couple of instruments, but not all of them. I mean, working right now. Uh, but uh, yeah, we we might uh, need. I mean, in term of analysis, to to submit sub, uh, some uh, some samples, or um, you know, uh, we we wait until fixing uh, you know our instruments. But I think at the beginning, uh, some training is is uh, is needed. Yeah, yeah, yeah for, for sure. I mean, I, it's, it's also it's also good that we can even run the, uh, duplicate uh, analysis, du duplicate sample uh, samples. So, we, and after training, you, we can run some here. You can, guys, you can do some of it over there. So, and we can compare our results because the main, from from my point of view, the main the main thing is that you also learn to do to do it. So we can do it here, but it's also good that you that you can also do it. So you can come for training, and after that. We can uh, we can assist you even remotely to 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 help you with uh, with your with your instrument and, and and there is no issue for that. I mean we are we are really um, happy to to help. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, okay, thank you. Bilal Amos, uh, please go ahead. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my point was very close to what Dr. Gassan said. Uh, we are we at Bezier University. Really, we are willing to receive and install these samplers, either active or passive samplers. Uh, but you know, uh, the analysis of the collected samples need high resolution GCMS or GCMS MS, and we at Penn University have only GCMS, so it, it will not will not get use of not, it for this situation. Not all of them. Sorry. Okay, look, uh, if you have a GCMS, we, you can do most of this analysis. I think, except dioxins, you can do most, yes, most, most of this Yes, dioxins, we need high-resolution GCMS. It's not, even in exactly. Palestine, we don't have high-resolution GCMS. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, no, 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 no problem for that. So these samples, we can send them all here. We can do the, uh, we can do, we can split the, the extracts once and then, we can do the analysis here, and then the the, the, the the analytes that you can do in Palestine, you can go back with the with half of this extract, so you can also test your 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 instrument. We can we can also have some give you small amount of standards, so you can run your instrument. You can run you can you can you will take from out from us the the methodology, 
So yeah, them, and then yeah, we, them, we can we can compare uh, the, the 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 result. We can we can help you with the, with this with, with this uh, in this matter. Really. Yes, instead we need a, a, the analytical method and the site selection criteria for to install these uh, samplers. And we can do most of the sure. work here. Sure. Thank you. Sure, sure. I think now I, now I will give the floor to, uh, I think it's written over here, uh, size standard. Uh, actually, I don't know the name. Uh, so please go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, related to the Palestinian uh, sample, it's okay. They covered Bilal and Doctor uh, about what I wanted to mention, but I, I want uh, to remember all that the Israeli side may, may be not allow for us to bring this uh, sample to Palestine. So, if you please send it uh, the document related to the uh, this instrument to uh, to me. To check it with the Israeli side if it's allowable to bring this instrument or not. This is first. Second, uh, you mentioned about the sampler after we sampling our sampling. You know, maybe we cannot analyze this sampling here. So we wanted to send it again for you. Uh, this is okay for you to take it our sample for you and analyze it or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that. That, that's what that's what we are expecting that you will collect the samples and we will you will send the samples back to us so we can do we can do this analysis that's that, that so, that's what i'm expecting so, but i was so, trying so, to say that, yeah 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 go ahead please so uh, if you please send the, the document related to this instrument to check it the side side if they uh, if allowable to us uh, to bring this instrument or not maybe it's not allowable for uh, palestinian to bring this instrument maybe i don't know i didn't see any document related to this uh, document related to this instrument uh, maybe they didn't allow for us to bring it maybe i don't know but, uh, so if you please send it this document check it if it's allowable to us to bring this uh, instrument or not okay okay we will we will send information and everything. The, the whole, the whole description. I mean, is 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 only is kind of a, it's a style still thing. No, there is no electronics. There is nothing there. It's just it's just kind of two pots that that, that need to be uh, installed. There is no. It shouldn't be complicated. But I know I understand the situation with uh, uh, Palestine and and and. and and Israel, and I will send all the information with all the description. Okay. So you this can, is, uh, I, I try uh, to, to, uh, uh, to my, I try uh, communicated with my manager uh, to facilitate this issue with the Israeli side, but I think I'll be very busy, and he didn't reply to me. I sent some message for him, so uh, I will follow up with my email uh, first of all, and the criteria for the site selection, everything. This is technical issue. We will solve it uh, when we get it, the instrument. And after that, we will discuss who will take the sample and everything. First of all, it's a big issue, and we wanted to know what happened here in Palestine. So I don't know if BSI can do that or not. Okay. Anyway, uh, just uh, just uh, uh, don't forget to give your contact details to Dr. Yasser, just to, to circulate, uh, circulate among us. So we know who we have to send. Uh, uh, I will send my email to Dr. Yasser. Okay, good. Thank okay, you. fine, fine. Thank you. Uh, Sherin, uh, do you have any comments? Because I can see your hand over here. Yeah, doctor, I have a comment, but not for uh, analysis or uh, sampling. It is uh, on uh, emissions. If uh, it is okay. caused cancer disease or not. Uh, about weapons, or, uh, a participant uh, asked about uh, weapons. Uh, I need to answer this question, but, but by Arabic. Okay, please go ahead. Okay, good. Okay. We were in the conference of the U-Pops, which is unintentional. We were talking about the dioxin and the furin. الاميشن بتاعهم واتكلمنا عن الاوبن بيرنينج الاوبن بيرنينج عندنا ده بيفوق يعني عشرات المرات اللي هو طالع من الصناعه يعني انت لو عندك اوبن بيرنينج في اريا وعندك عشر مصانع مثلا اضرب في عشره بيفوقها فانت عندك اوبن بيرنينج سواء كان المسبب ليه هو سيلف اجنيشن او حاجه عمدا او باستخدام سلاح انت بقى عندك بيرنينج ف 
فالبيرنينج ده بيطلع كل البوبس اللي انت تتخيلها في الحياة وبكميات كبيرة جدا هل هي مسببة للأورام؟ أيوة هي مسببة للأورام بدرجات مختلفة هل هي مسببة لأمراض أخرى؟ نعم هي مسببة لأمراض أخرى في المحاضرة بتاع الدكتور رولانز هو ذكر لك أنواع متعددة من الديسربشن اللي بيحصل بيحصل هرمون ديسربشن يعني ممكن تلاقي تشوه يعني اختلال في الهرمونات اختلال في وتشوه في الأجنة مظاهر كتيرة هتشوفها غير صحية موجودة في سكان المكان اللي بيحصل فيه المشاكل دي طيب هل اللي أنا لما بيحصل لي مثلا قصف لأنابيب بترول أو غاز بيحصل في مشكلة؟ أيوة في مشكلة كبيرة جدا لأن الإيميشن اللي بيطلع ده فيه يو بوبس فيه دايكسين وفي يورين ده اللي احنا بنقدره ده الفاكتور اللي موجود عندنا فبنقدر نحسبه لكن أنا عندي سبع مركبات بينطلقوا سبع مركبات وكلهم كلهم ممرضين ومؤثرين لا طبعا هو المكان كونتامينيتد حتى لو انت ما عملتش اناليسيز وما خدتش سامبل هو اوريدي انت شايف الافكت على السكان الموجودين واحب انوه ان سبب نشأة سبب نشأة اللي هي الاتفاقيات البيئية هي ظهور أو ملاحظة أو انتشار ظاهرة صحية غريبة على سكان مكان ما سبب نشأة استوكهولم هو ده السبب إن هم لاحظوا حالات من التسمم ظواهر غريبة على السكان ابتدوا يدوروا ويبحثوا بعد كده لقوا إن المركبات اللي هي الأورجانيك بليوتنت دي هي السبب مين مات نفس القصة كان في قرية اسمها قرية ميناميتا تسمت الاتفاقية على اسم القرية بسبب التسمم بالزئبق فانتوا دلوقتي شايفين المظاهر الصحية ده كده انتوا اكسيد الليمت طالما البوبس اكسيد الليمت انتوا هتشوفوها في المظاهر الصحية اللي انتوا شايفينها عشان كده بنطلب من الدول ان هي تعمل اسسمنت وتبعت لنا تقارير عن الحالات دي الموجودة عندها للمكتب عندنا عشان نقدر نساعدكم عشان نقيم المشاكل بتاعتكم ونقدر نساعدكم ويبقى في دوكيومنت معانا صريح وواضح يعني اتمنى ان المعلومة تكون وضحت البوبس مش بس يو بوبس احنا شفنا ان البوبس الريليز بتاعها مرتبط بالحرارة بشكل كبير فانت مش بس هيبقى عندك دايكسين وفورين او السبع مركبات كلهم انت لو عندك بوبس موجودة في مواد بناء هتطلع بردك لو عندك بيلدينج بيحترق كل البوبس الموجودة فيه الموجودة في مواد البناء هي كمان هتبقى ايميتد في الهواء لو عندك مناطق زراعية وهي فيها بيست سايد في مكان مفتوح ملهاش تخزين كويس أو حتى المخزن تم قصفه بقى عندك بوبس منطلقة في كل يعني الأشكال اللي انت متخيلها في المية وفي الهواء في التربة ده هتشوفه في السكان هتشوفه بعنيك في السكان من قبل ما تعمل أناليسيز هو مرأة العين يعني واضح جدا العين المجردة فيا ريت يا ريت يكون في تقييم للاثر الصحي ريليتد للبوبس ويتم ارساله لينا في المكتب لان ده هيساعدنا كتير اللي احنا هنعرف مشاكلكم بالظبط ايه هي البرايورتي اللي انتوا تبتدوا بيها ايه هي اكثر الاماكن اللي احنا بنعتبرها هوت سبوتس تبدا تبتدوا تشتغلوا عليها بس وشكرا لحضراتكم معلش دكتوره شيرين ممكن بس تعقيب بسيط عاطف عاطف يعني انا شاكر لك يعني على التوضيح لانه كمان المشكله ان في قطاع غزه كمان انت بتحكي عن منطقه يعني من اعلى الكثافات السكانيه في العالم يعني انت بتحكي بس عن قطاع غزه عرض يعني من من الغرب للشرق بتحكي عن 10 كيلو متر في في 40 كيلو 360 كيلو متر مربع يسكنها 2 مليون نسمه يعني من اعلى كثافات سكانيه في العالم وانا لما حكيت في قصه العدوان المتكرر يعني ما ما خلوش شيء الا بنضرب يعني بيضربوا مصانع بيضربوا مباني بيضربوا مستشفيات بيضربوا يعني كل شيء بنضرب فيعني فعلا احنا يعني بدينا نستشعر انه يعني من كثر الحالات والقضايا والامراض والكانسرز فيعني انا عشان هيك بس طرحت السؤال هذا ممكن تكون يعني هذه مؤشرات انه في لكن بنظن في عدد في امكانيه انه اخذ التحاليل والعينات وين يعني اتمنى ان شاء الله من خلال المبادره يعني الاخ ياسر والمركز ومن خلال اليوم. اتمنى انه احنا يعني اذا بدينا في عمل الخطه الوطنيه والنبس والسرفي انه يعني نبدا بشكل ان شاء الله مرتب بمساعدتكم ونقدر نتوصل لبعض الفيجرز والارقام 
اللي على اساس يعني نظبطكم اياها شكرا عفوا يا فندم في حاجة اسمها بايو مونيترنج كمان اللي هو احنا رصد حيوي الرصد الحيوي في البان الامهات ممكن ناخدها عينات بشرية وفي كمان ممكن ناخدها من حيوانات بس الافضل اللي احنا بناخدها من عينات بشرية وفي مشروع بردك تاني عن اللي احنا بنقدره في البلاسينتا ازاي نقدر البوبس في البلاسينتا ده كله بايو مونيترنج ممكن في يعني لاحقا بعد كده يكون في مشاريع مشتركه ما بين مكتب المركز الاقليمي والدوله عندكم بحيث ان احنا نعمل كمان الرصد الحيوي ده. بس شكرا لحضرتك. اوكي ثانك يو اول فور ذا ديسكشن ناو اي ثينك اي ويل موف تو ذا نيكست بريزنتر سومن دكتور ياسر يس بليز كيوكلي اوكي Uh, uh, Dr. Yasser, I send it for you my email. Uh, when the document arrived from Dr. Karelli, please send it to me to my email. My general manager said to me that he will follow up this issue with the Israeli side. Okay, uh, okay. To, to follow up this uh, instrument and bring it to Palestine. Related to okay. Gaza, we know that, and uh, we as ABSI can access with this instrument to, to Gaza. I I wanted to inform Atif if this instrument came to West Bank, I be sure, I will be sure that this instrument will go to Gaza also. Thanks. Okay. Okay. I I will update your email ID with uh, Carol, and I think uh, probably uh, Carol he will discuss this issue with uh, Dr. Hassan, and maybe I think they will uh, combine. They will make a decision, and uh, they will do the further processing. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, excuse me, doctor. Uh, I have a comment for a short chain chlorinated paraffins. Uh, somebody asked about is there inventory guidance? Yes. في uh, uh, inventory guidance. وفي كمان محاضرة هتلاقوها على channel بتاعتنا اليوتيوب الخاصة بدولة عمان هتلاقوا short chain محاضرة ليا عن inventory شرح شرحة في كل التفاصيل الخاصة خاصة بالانفنتوري ايه هي البرودكت ايه هي الصناعات إيه يعني هتشوفوا كل حاجة ايه هو الليمت اللي احنا مرتبطين به إيه فارجعوا لها هتستفيدوا منها وكمان في الجايد لاينز اللي هي محطوطة دلوقتي عندكم إيه ف... ولو في اي سؤال بعد كده ممكن ترسلونا عن طريق الايميل عن اي نقطة وقفت قدامكم Yeah, and I just shared the inventory guidance on SCCP of the Stockholm Convention in the chat. So I think you can directly download uh, from Zoom. Yeah, also I made the link uh, to the Stockholm Convention website to our project, uh, pilot project for inventory in Indonesia. Yeah, so uh, on this uh, website, Stockholm Convention website, You can also download uh, the the project uh, uh, report and uh, even a more detailed uh, presentation. And uh, I also shared our review article on chlorinated paraffins in the technosphere, which has open access and you can directly download from there. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you, Roland. And if there is any further discussion, please uh, put it in the chat box. I think uh, they will give the proper reply.